Oh, good afternoon, everybody. Hello, it's Matt here. Just um, live streaming from my garden today, Monday afternoon. Just um, hope some people come on. Hope to see you. I'm just going to talk a little bit about um, something I've learned about fairly recently, which is pruning um, of the apple trees. Um, I was lucky enough to go on a course with South East Essex Organic Gardeners and Orchards East um, a few weeks ago and we were looking at apple tree pruning which I thought would be very useful because um, obviously at Trust Links we've got St Lawrence Orchard and we look after the orchard but also um, in my own back garden I've got a couple of apple trees that we've had about 15 years so I was um, quite keen to see how I could maintain my apple trees, what I needed to do and basically we kind of just left them to grow for about 15 years and not prune them at all, just kind of left them and um, I didn't really want to intervene with the trees too much. So I went on the course and learned quite a few things. So I thought I'd share with you today what I've learned on the course. I don't know if we've got anybody on live, but I'll just record it because I think this is also going to YouTube. Um, so we can also get people to see stuff later on catch up. Um, so I'll just show you the apple trees. So this, we've got two. I'll move back a bit. As you can see, there's a washing line that hangs between the two apple trees, but our washing goes on. So quite, quite a compact garden. Um, and spring has started to come. So the leaves have started to come on this lovely apple tree here. And they've just in the last couple of days really started to come in the apple tree here. So spring is coming. As you can see, it's, um, yeah, they're fairly un, um, they're not particularly pruned or structured. But I'm telling, telling you what I've learned on my pruning course. So the first thing to do was kind of survey the tree from all angles and just have a really good sense of the shape of the tree. And with the, with the apple tree, there's two ways to um, have the shape of the tree. One is to have a, like a bowl, a bowl shape. If I um, turn it on to selfie mode. So here, the idea is that we've kind of got a bowl in the middle of the apple tree um, that the air and the light can go through so that it's a nice shape for, for growing of the branches. And you want it to be fairly balanced across the tree. Well, this isn't particularly, but it is, it's all right. So what I looked at was kind of the shape of the tree. The other way to have the tree is to have more of a standard in the middle of the tree and then have it almost like a Christmas tree coming out of the side of the apple tree. But these, as I said, I've kind of just left them for 15 years to do what they like and particularly the one at the top of the gardens um, gone on its side quite a lot so it hasn't got a main trunk and similarly this one has had a few branches come out of it. Hello everybody, quite a few people watching now, which is lovely. Do put your comments. Hello Julie. Um, so, with this apple tree, as I say, we were kind of looking at the shape of the tree and looking at it to try to get a, the bowl shape of the tree. Um, so with each year, you're only allowed to cut off about 20% of the tree, 20% of the branches otherwise it will feel really injured so we had to be really careful with how we chose which branches to cut off and then you had to be really precise about the cuts so you had to be really sort of careful so rather than just cutting wherever you like and just chopping it back like you would with certain things I've got a buddlier um, I'll show you buddier over here which I just cut back really harsh every year and then it shoots up massive branches every year and then it grows beautiful um, purpley flowers that the butterflies love so you can hack the buddleia back completely but you wouldn't really want to do that with an apple tree you need to kind of treat the apple tree with a bit of respect and a bit of reverence I think um, so when I was looking at the tree earlier in the year I was looking at what branches could be cut back safely without the tree feeling injured and 
the way the tutor talked about it was to basically think about where you wanted the what shape you wanted the tree to be in in five years so you want to reshape it so that it will be a shape that would be good to be looked after so there was one branch coming out of here you can see where I've cut it here and it was just going right across right over the path and because I hadn't really looked after it for several years the apples really weighed down they were really heavy um, and the branches became all really bent and bowed down like this one and so you kind of don't want too many on the floor so I kind of cut back some at the bottom there's that one there to cut back let's see there it is and cut back this one and cut back the one that was sort of shooting up really high which is there and then, yes Ros we had amazing crop there was one here we had huge numbers of apples and I made apple chutney gave loads away to people kept some so we started sort of picking them in September but then kept them through the autumn um, into Christmas really so we had quite a few different apples and can make some amazing apple products so yeah I was also going to talk about how to make the cut so you have to have quite sharp um, saw or secateurs and be really precise about where you cut there's another one that I've cut there just with some secateurs so you want it to be really close to the other branch so you don't have other bits sticking out otherwise um, more bits of um, branch would grow out also you want it to be going at a slight angle so that the water doesn't go on it so particularly if there's an up upright one like this one here you don't want it to be flat because the more water might go on it and then it might go a bit um, mouldy it's really about yeah thinking about the shape of the tree and then kind of building that shape over time so that you've got that sort of nice bowl shape and trying to cut out the light oh, sorry let the light through so that the apple tree can breathe and so that the lovely blossom can come on so there's it's starting to blossom here look which is really nice so that gets me thinking we need to do a live stream from St Lawrence Orchard fairly soon once the blossom starts to come out. Um, yeah, the tree further up the garden, as you can see the, the trunk is kind of at a very odd angle. It just kind of, um, yeah, wasn't straight at all. And oh, I think, you know, turn your weakness into your asset. How can you work around that? So where there was a, another one that came up, I didn't really know what to do with this before it went on the course and that was coming right up in the middle so I cut that back so that it again created this bowl shape and the idea is that the tree will balance out so that the other side it will grow up and kind of create that shape and then it will balance out so that I think next year I need to do quite a lot more cutting the other side because it's all all the branches have got a bit tangled here um, but as I said you really only want to cut about 20% of your tree each year otherwise it feels yeah vulnerable so as you can see here there's quite a few branches that are all crossing one another and this one where the apples were really heavy it's actually gone down onto the floor and this one here so that's not really good um, but now I've learned from going on that course I'll know what to do next year and can do it so obviously winter is the time to chop back your apple trees not while it's um, coming out in leaf like this one is but in the sort of winter time while it's dormant apparently the stone fruits like the plum ones are summer is the best time to chop them back and we've got some really big plum trees in the back so um, that will be something I'll do later in the year and as you can see I haven't really done anything beneath it apart from allowed wildlife to grow so we've got some bluebells and I think Tracy will know these are I think these are Spanish bluebells rather than the English bluebells I've got some lovely celandine the yellow flower 
colours. Got some um, African violets, which are very beautiful, and some forget-me-nots, and lots of daisies, which my children really like making daisy chains out of. So um, yeah, it's very biodiverse. My son did a um, task the other day of measuring out a metre square of our um, garden and look at the different varieties. I think he identified 14 different varieties of plants just in that. So it's certainly not a managed lawn. I'm not sure what this one is. That's a, a nettle of some sort, but obviously not stinging. So Julie, hi Julie. So you've asked which course it was. So it was with um, South, East, South East Essex Organic Gardeners, Seog, who we work closely with. And then it was a one day course that was funded through Heritage Lottery Fund with um, Orchard East. And it was a, just a pruning course. And I was hoping to get some later this year. We went up to St Lawrence Orchard and did the pruning course as well. I was hoping to do some more this year um, which hopefully we'll get to if not next year I'll do a bit to Heritage Lottery so that you can um, do the course too well, there's a bee so there's lots and lots of solitary bees here lots of amazing wildlife and lots of birds we just had a um, just had a robin fly down on a sparrow oh. There's the sparrows on the Budlia at the moment. I don't know if you can see that. So how's everybody doing? How's everybody coping with self-isolation and staying in? Oh look, the sparrow's picking the leaves off the Budlia. Maybe it's making a nest. Yeah, wildflowers are lovely, Jackie, that's right. So the idea is not to mow it, just to leave it wild. And um, <laughs> a few years ago, I used to have chickens and they used to kind of dig up all the all the grass and all the um, area. And I think that was really good for spreading the seeds and spreading the bulbs around. I'll just turn it so you can see my face again. Yeah, so how's everybody doing? Are you okay? Are you coping all right with isolation? I've done a few, I've some bits of gardening. I'm really lucky to have the garden here that I can spend time in. 